Hello and welcome back to the channel, my Scratchy, and today we're going to be talking a bit about free to play open beta for predecessor, the release, my thoughts, my feelings of everything that's changed, hasn't changed, and so on and so forth. Drop a like on the video and subscribe for future predecessor content. Let's go ahead and dive into this review. Now, now that I've decided to do a review of the open beta, I'm going to be talking about everything in the game. Now, a little bit of context for anybody that might be finding this video for the first time or my channel for the first time. I've been playing Predecessor for 15 months uh, since the release of Early Access. I was not a former Paragon player, and I've just been a MOBA player, and I have a lot of context to Predecessor, the development, the way that things have been going, and the way that the game is now with the free-to-play release with the open beta. So, the game has now been released free-to-play as of the 28th, so it's been about a couple of days since the free-to-play play launch the open beta launch with the addition of xbox um, s and xbox series s those two new consoles as well as playstation 4 playstation 5 have been playable now since uh the start of december and then pc has been playing early access uh for yeah like 15 months now so we've been we've been playing this game for quite a while and we've seen a lot of the different iterations and probably most notable with with the actual patch that brought us into open beta was the visual change now i gotta say i want to get this out of the way first the visual change is beautiful. I do think it's a little bit dark, but crazy enough, I just went in the settings and turned my brightness up a little bit. It feels a little dark, but it makes the game feel much more alive. The game was very flat and bland. It didn't have a lot of color. It didn't have a lot of saturation. The shadows didn't feel as good as they do now, which is weird enough because I don't, don't usually care about shadows in games. But overall, the game looks phenomenal. I think it looks and feels really, really good. That's one thing I can say about Predecessor when it comes to you know giving a full review. I want to talk about the whole game or like the game holistically. The game feels phenomenal to play. The, the controls feel good. I'm playing on mouse and keyboard on PC. It feels very fluid. It's a, a pretty simple game to get into. Everybody has a flash that you can use. Um, everybody's got a crest that you know you can upgrade it's it's a pretty simple like oh, seriously it's a pretty simple MOBA to get into it's not very complicated but at the same time there is a lot of nuance so on the you know approachability of the game in terms of onboarding I think mechanically getting into the game is not very hard unfortunately that's going to take us to probably one of our most biggest downsides about predecessor is there's not much onboarding they have a small tutorial system that I think is pretty rudimentary and doesn't really cover everything that it even should and there's no real way to get players into the game other than to just kind of dump them into matches and see how they do. I think that this is going to be probably a pretty uphill battle for Predecessor, considering that there's going to be a lot of people that maybe want to check out this game that have never played a MOBA before or that are trying to just join this MOBA. And as someone that's been playing MOBAs for about 14 years or so, getting into a new MOBA, a reasonably established MOBA. So this game has like 30 plus heroes, um, you know, has an entire item system, has a meta, has, you know, objectives, getting into all of that information it can be very daunting. It can be very frustrating and hard to learn it at all. It's going to take a lot of time. Some players just have to literally grind through a lot of time. And, you know, anything that the game can do to kind of help along that process is definitely appreciated. Unfortunately, Predecessor definitely falls short in the onboarding category. Now, when it comes to other MOBAs, I know like Smite, for example, has a whole host of different game modes, some that are much more approachable than the traditional, I believe it's called Conquest mode. Uh, I don't really play Smite. Um, that is the kind of traditional 5v5, like competitive mode. And Predecessor falls short to deliver that level of experience as well, where Predecessor just has the 5v5 mode, normal matches. Um, there is versus AI. Sure, you can play that, but there's really no mode to just kind of sink your teeth into and play the hero. And, and just kind of like learn the combat or anything like that. You can go into practice mode and kind of jump around by yourself, or you can go into AI mode. Otherwise, you're playing against uh, actual players. And uh, yeah, that can be a bit of a tough experience. Now, I'm not someone super new. I've been playing the game for a while, so not really one of my biggest concerns, but definitely something that I believe would be uh, a fairly tough thing for a new player to get into this game and try to try to learn it over time. Um, but with open beta, what kind of systems, what kind of monetization, what kind of content is in the game? We have, like I said, 30 plus odd heroes. I forget what the exact number is now. And, you know, not too, too long ago for anybody that doesn't know, they added the Amber system or like the Amber currency, which is the free to play currency for predecessor. Now in predecessor, unfortunately, at the time of this recording, the only thing that you can spend that Amber on is the hero acquisition. So 
this is a pretty traditional business model for most MOBAs. You, you know, you play the game, you win, you do, you know, daily challenges, whatever, whatever they have in the game to allow you to unlock the free to play currency. Well, that's what predecessor has. Uh, now it's pretty basic. It's pretty new. It's pretty simple, um, pretty bare bones to, to say the least. And, and basically to say that it's, it's unfinished. It's an unfinished system. Amber is the currency, the free to play currency for predecessor. And currently the only thing that you can spend it on is, um, heroes. So for new accounts, for people that don't have all the heroes unlocked like myself, you're going to mostly be, you know, grinding that currency and using it to unlock new heroes for free to play accounts. But uh, for some of us that have some of the early access bundles and have been playing for quite a while, uh, we, we really are sitting on quite a bit of currency that we can't quite do anything with. So my thoughts for the currency is that it is it is a little unfortunate for the open beta to launch without uh, kind of fleshing out this system a bit more. But you know, it, it is what it is. And for the future of predecessor, I would like to see almost everything be purchasable with this currency. Now, I think that there could be a case to be made for not releasing, say, like the upper echelon of skin designs for this currency, but there's an affinity system that I would like to see be purchasable, the free track for the affinity system, or the paid track, sorry, to be purchasable for free with Amber. I would love to see, um, you know, some of the lower tier skins purchasable, uh, profile, banners, borders, icons, all of these different things, all the different cosmetics that the game has to offer in some form or fashion. I would love to see that content be added to the game and potentially purchasable with this amber as well. Now we've touched on the affinity system and I'm going to kind of bring my thoughts from, you know, previous iterations of early access now into open beta as we haven't seen much change. So the affinity system is essentially a battle pass that is attached to every single hero. So here's the way that the system works. It has a free track and a premium track that you can purchase for their premium currency called platinum. Now the free track you it's not it's not really opt in. Every time you play the game, you are engaging with the that free track so if you play a game of a mid laner if you play a game of an off laner jungler whatever you are earning experience to go into that track right you're going into that battle pass now the reason why i'm bringing this up is because unfortunately i'm not a huge fan of this system because it's not just a battle pass that sits on top of the game. It's a battle pass that is forced on you on every hero. Now, again, this is cool if it was free, but unfortunately it's not free. Um, the premium pass, the premium part of it is going to have more cosmetics, mainly the crown. Um, I believe the emote, I don't remember where the emotes at, but the crown and the emote, whereas the only like major cosmetic that you're going to earn from playing on the free track is the master skin. Now, don't get me wrong, them having the master skin on the free side is perfect. I love that. Um, but you will not be able to access the majority of the other cosmetics. Like you just won't be able to get to them unless you purchase that premium track. Now, last but not least, when talking about this affinity system, probably my least favorite part is that the premium track when you purchase it comes with an experience boost. So not only do you get more contact or content, sorry, for purchasing the premium path, you are also going to get your time is going to be worth more. Your actual time is going to stretch and be worth more. So I'm a, you know, just to keep it kind of short to end on this note, I'm a really I'm not really a big fan of the affinity system. I think that it's, it's mostly a system that uh, feels bad to engage with because yes, you are unlocking things, but you're unlocking them very, very slowly unless you invest money. And it's again, uh, an investment that you have to make on every single hero in the game. So really, really don't like this system. I don't feel like it's very, uh, consumer friendly personally. So moving on, how does the game feel? The gameplay itself, phenomenal. The gameplay all through early access now into open beta has felt phenomenal. It feels very clean. It feels very fluid. It's a, it's a kind of newer gen third person MOBA with much more versed verticality. And in a previous patch just before, not too long ago, before um, open beta, they actually added the blast cone flower things, kind of similar to League of Legends with the blast cones. Um, and this also adds more mobility, more verticality, and more ways to kind of engage with that plane in the game. I think that overall, my sentiment on this, I know it's a short section of this review, is that the gameplay feels great. If you jump on this game and you're a MOBA player, you're probably gonna enjoy it. If you jump on this game and you're looking for a MOBA to get into, it's not the hardest MOBA to get into. There's a lot of nuance, a lot of things you have to learn, but it feels good. Every time you play this game, you're probably gonna, like anybody that plays this game, I should say, is probably gonna agree with this sentiment. The game feels good, it feels fun to play, and yeah, the gameplay is very 
very much so there. Now, a couple of other things that I don't really care for, which I can quickly kind of spit fire through. The game's matchmaking is not great. I'm not gonna harp on that too much. It's just not very great. Um, we don't have a rank system in the game yet, and this is kind of kind of patched in along with this discussion. A ranked mode for a predecessor has been promised. It has yet to be delivered. We're looking at that sometime, they said, in the summertime. So. We'll see when that gets added to the game. But as far as like taking the game seriously or playing casually, you're kind of just very tossed in together. The game does have a hidden MMR system, um, which is like for the matchmaking. But like I said, it's not very great. And the matches can be really wonky. You can have some really inexperienced players playing with the really inexperienced players. And it, it just gets a little bit rough. So um, kind of two points in one, not the best matchmaking in terms of actual games and the matches that you're going to play. And two, there's no rank system to work towards. Um, which is a big bummer because, you know, would really love to see that. Definitely we'll see it, um, you know, in the near future sometime. But I've, I would have really loved to see that come out either with free to play and the open beta or shortly after. And it looks like we have to wait just a little bit longer than that. Um, probably the, the next thing about the game that I'm not a huge fan of is the skin prices. They have actually lowered some of their skin prices recently as of this update. So going into free to play and open beta, they've lowered some of their prices. But ultimately, they only lowered some of their prices and they didn't kind of... It, it kind of made me feel like they were going to lower their prices and not lower some prices and it feels a little bit like a, a bit of a small bait and switch where they did lower their prices this is true uh, but i think that the prices for some of their skins are just a bit too expensive uh, again this is also kind of paired with that same sentiment that the game also does not have a free-to-play currency system in place for for purchasing skins so there's no way to purchase skins other than to use currency and in my opinion the uh the cost for this content is just way too high so no ranked mode unfortunately we don't have a casual mode we do know a 3v3 mode is coming in the future uh, but that also was not released with free to play and um yeah that's not in the game so my overall thoughts of predecessor is that the game is incredibly good the game has a lot of potential the gameplay is incredibly good sorry i want to be clear um the game has a lot of potential but if you're new to the game, if you're catching this review for the first time, uh, I've had a, a pretty strong opinion about the development of Predecessor that has not been very positive. Uh, the development is very slow. Um, a lot of things that you would kind of expect to have been done or, or get done don't really happen in what feels like a timely fashion. And unfortunately, the open beta is kind of ringing true on that same sentiment for me as well. We get open beta, but really, for anybody that's not brand new to the game, the open beta is small price changes small balance changes and a visual change now like i said the visual change is really nice small price changes are okay and balance changes are kind of the necessity of running a live service game so nothing to really write home about there so launching from early access into open beta for most games or i feel like for most games it feels like a really big moment a big moment to market your game to talk about your game to get people playing and that's absolutely what is happening we're going to talk a little bit more about marketing and there definitely are more players playing now that the game is free we're seeing the player base count rise on steam charts alone but it doesn't feel like a big moment it doesn't feel like a big piece of content came out because it didn't and it doesn't feel like there's really much to discuss you know we have new balance changes some and ultimately i think that this open beta launch for me has fall has fallen very flat it feels very cheap it feels very uh, lazily done and unfortunately just doesn't really feel that great to be entering this whole new phase of development and what feels like would be a big phase but you know seemingly isn't for new players you probably won't share the sentiment because you're new you have so much to explore so much to unlock amber to grind characters to unlock and test out items to learn meta to learn strategies to learn all of this is going to be very good for you um and hopefully they can kind of up that pace of development and keep your interest a little bit better than maybe they've been able to do with me or, or other players that have been playing for a bit longer so Open beta is here. We're waiting for some of these bigger systems to come out. We're waiting for some of these things. Um, but yeah, like I said, just a little bit disappointed that we didn't get something that came out with the game. Now, the game is free to play. There are many more players. Like I said, we can definitely feel it and see it. Um, but they've done something that's a little bit interesting. And this is not really related to the game, but definitely something I want to talk about. Um, there is an API website called Ometa.City. And Ometa.City was tracking the total number of games played per day. And that metric was kind of used as like a way to collectively look at the overall player base and kind of determine the health of the player base. You know, when big patches would drop, we would see that number of total games played per day rise. And then when things got a little bit more stale, we would see that fall. Now, it seems as if though they've removed that ability to track that statistic or they've asked them not to which just feels a little scummy and a little 
meh, because, you know, ultimately, as a player that's investing their time and or potentially their hard-earned money in a game, you also want to have the information. You know, I, I usually wouldn't suggest that somebody invest their money into stocks if they haven't done some, you know, market research or some kind of research on the company that they're looking to invest in. And so the same thing goes for a game like Predecessor. You know, you looking into the numbers is kind of a fun thing to do and an important thing to do, but unfortunately, it feels like that has been kind of removed, and so we don't have that ability. Now, they are marketing the game. Like I said, this goes along with that open beta release that ability to get new players in they are marketing the game um, but the marketing feels a little bit small which is not necessarily a terrible thing because I don't actually feel like they've done a whole lot and maybe they will up the marketing at a later date uh, for a bigger event right um, they have sponsored some streamers to come in and play and I do think that that's a good thing it feels like some kind of smaller not colossally huge streamers and the cost of these things is definitely very very expensive so they have definitely invested and spent some money and they've gotten some players in and the question when it comes to free-to-play live service games will always be, is it enough to retain those players? Is the game good enough? Is it doing well enough to retain those players? So we will have to wait and see. Post-recording editor Crashy here. I just wanted to throw this in towards the end of the video to answer the question of the title, should you play predecessor open beta? The answer is yes. It's an open beta. Check it out. If you like it, keep playing. If you don't, don't. See what the development has to offer. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Like I said, with a new game mode on the horizon, with a ranked mode on the horizon, hopefully within you know the next three to five, maybe six months, um, we can have some of these newer players that are invested, learning the game, and then ultimately sticking around for some of those big things to come out. So friends, thank you so much for watching. That's my review of the open beta. I think that to kind of summarize, uh, the game feels very fun to play. It has always felt very, very fun to play. Um, but some of the things that you would expect to come out with an open beta release didn't happen at all. Uh, some of the things that you would hope to see in a competitive MOBA do not exist in this game and um, not really ways to spend your currency, not really ways to engage in the game other than to just turn it on and not even the best onboarding for new players and the new player experience. So overall, I'm not a huge fan of this open beta release. I think it's a, a bit of uh, let down a bit underwhelming uh, for new players i think that y'all have so much to learn so much to experience that you're probably feeling a little bit different and i welcome you to the game and hope that you have a phenomenal time learning everything and can learn some jungle stuff from me so as always be sure to be kind of one another tell someone you love them and i'll see you on the next video